is actually solving this exercise number three which is just creating this class that has one private instance variable and these getters and setters the for the getters and setters for the radius and also this get volume area and circumference is going to be based on those calculations so the first thing is always just create a project so let me just close this all and then create a new project I'm going to name it week 12 exercise number 3 and finish now I'm going to right click on this package and create a new class that I'm going to name circle just you have to pay attention to the spelling because we don't want to have a wrong spelling so I'm going to choose double because double can accept int but the opposite is not always the case and also the result is double of the calculations for for everything but you know what let's just make it int why not yeah it will Inshallah, let me just show you because actually if I make it int the only thing that is not going to work is the get volume and get uh, area because the area is pi multiplied by something and pi also is, is a double value but uh, so I'm going to return double for these others but this one I'm going to return an int so I'm going to use NetBeans help by using this source insert code so instead of me typing the getters and setters this is going to be helping me so insert code and then i'm going to choose the getter and setter there's only one instance variable also i'm just going to select that encapsulate field will make it private if it wasn't private so it's already private selecting it or not selecting it doesn't make any difference so let's generate now i have this get radius and set radius not it's all about int because I declared it as int now if I change my mind I want to make it double I just need to change this to double and then everywhere just make it double and that's going to be, be working as well you remember the discussion about the this because this radius here is a parameter and this radius here is the class <coughs> variable in order to distinguish between which one is which so this this is going to allow me to say that this is the class variable and this is the parameter so you see I click this one it just highlights the parameter and this highlights the class if I remove the this and then now I'm having everything highlighted to the argument so this parameter sorry so that's why I if I want this to be the radius of the class radius I just need to use this dot and then this shows me this is the one now associated to that now that's it now all I need to do now is maybe create those get average oh yes what if yeah what about the uh, make, make sure to, that the values entered for the radius are positive but well, I'm going to do something about them so let's in here I'm not going to be allowing this to happen what I'm going to do for example is something like this if I'm just going to show you something different so if the radius now if I if I'm not using this the radius is going to be the one that is given as the parameter this is the parameter if this is negative I'm just going to make this No, I'm just going to leave this as is. And then before doing that, now this radius, imagine that the user 
when when I say the user, the one is going to use my class is here. <coughs> this is what I'm going to use the circle. Let's call it circle is equal new circle. Notice that the capital letter makes a big difference. Now this is just a variable while this is the class. This is the name of the class uh, of my object. So, so now this circle dot is going to allow me to set the radius and imagine I put minus 5. So now this this minus 5 is going to to go inside here and now, now this this one is going to be minus 5. So this is minus 5 minus 5 is less than 0 yes minus minus Five becomes five. What am I putting with this five inside the radius, which is this parameter? And then now this is five. I put five inside the class. Let me show you something maybe more interesting. Let me rename this to value so you can understand it maybe better. Now I need I don't need to put this thing. So the value it was given to me by the user. If the value is less than zero, make the value negative. Or you know I can and just do some something like this. Equal value multiplied multiplied by minus one. That's the same thing, right? Or maybe like do it like this. That's even shorter. Which means that if it was negative, convert it to a positive number, and then the positive number is going to say put it here. Now, what if the user gives me five? So if is five less than zero? zero no, so there's no else, nothing to do, check this 5, put it inside the radius. So this is going to work in both ways. Well, this is another way to do these things. We can, there are different ways how to do that, but this is one way. Yes, Mohammed. Okay. So that's uh, how we do this uh, verification, yes. If you put the else and then you put what? Radius? radius equal, value. equal value. Well, yes. Did it here? Okay, now if you did it here, now this is going to be put the value to be, for example, if the user gives you minus 5, this minus 5 is going to make this true. So I get inside. And then I flip minus 5 to become 5, and what I do with it? Nothing. So I need to do something with it. Uh, maybe I could do something like this, then yes. But something that you do in the if and the else at the same time, which means that, well, you do it all the way. In all cases, you're going to be doing it. So it's better that you just remove then this else and just do it anyways so this is going to always happen if this is true you're going to get inside and then you go to do this if this is False, don't go inside and do this. So that's the same result.
uh, but it involves less coding, less typing. If it was now with this, now if I change just to add this, now this value just change it to whatever it was it was yeah. to radius and then that's going to be okay it's the same thing but maybe less confusing so if you're confused with this this and everything you can just change this and rename it to some any variable name that makes sense for you and then or maybe just R like for the radius and then this is going to be made the same thing but if you're more comfortable with that you can just leave it as is and this is going to be okay all right now the last thing is just to create those getters that are not really getters because they're not associated to variables i'm just going to make this get volume so public double get volume and I'm going to show you something nice uh, so this is going to be returning uh, we said like the volume is 4 divided by 3 multiplied by pi multiplied by r cube so I can just put this divided by 3 don't forget <coughs> int by int is going to be a problem so yes, I need to make one of them to be a double, so I don't have this to be an int by int. And then I'm multiplying this by 3.14, and I multiply this by radius three times. <coughs> well, there's a better way I'm going to show you this one. So this is okay, or as you mentioned, maybe take this, put it inside of a variable, and then make it to some kind of result and then you do the calculation and then you just return the result which is basically the same thing right but since it's the same thing let's not declare it and keep it like this first of all let me show you something instead of 3.14 i can use the pi the math the mathematical pi by just doing something like this this math there's a class called mat that I can use mat dot and you can see pi is there if I choose pi it's going to sh give me this pi number which is more accurate than 3.14 so I can just use this one the second thing is that this mat class is quite convenient because it will allow me to have this kind of power something power of some to uh, the power of something else but I'm going just to take this and say that this is going to be math dot pow and the power takes two parameters which means I take the radius and I would like it to be cube at the power three which is this means that that the radius at the power three is going to to be calculated here and this is a method that is going to be returning something that is going to be the result of radius multiplied by itself three times and then this this is going to give me just the pi which is the long version of it and that would be a more accurate calculations of the calculation of the volume Copy and paste is your friend if you know how to do it it's, uh, without making a mistake. And then area, and then all you need to do is that for the area is pi dot square. So it's pi multiplied by r square, which is just same thing here. And the last one, which is this. Six Conference. So the circumference, circumference, is just 
2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius. So I don't need to do this. So just when you do the copy and paste, just be careful that you don't mess things up. And here we have now our class. If I'd like to use that class, I can just set the radius to be something and then I can display uh, the well the radius I can display that okay let's just see the radius and I can see the circle dot get radius and then maybe do some copy and pasting so I can display the, the volume okay which is now get, get volume notice that I'm using just one letter to make it distinct from the others and control space is going to complete the rest so area and then just select the R and then the rest and type A and control space and, and the last one is circumference and just get type and then I'm selecting this thing type C and then control space and I need to press the enter because there were two options now if I run this thing, now this is the volume, the area, and the circumference. If I would like to see some kind of more interesting, more easy to understand, this is 2, two times pi, this is pi, because one square doesn't make any difference. This is well you have to trust the computer <laughs> or make it the calculations yourself. This is four, four divided by three multiplied by, by pi. Because one power one cube is just one, doesn't make any change. So anyways, that's uh, how we can build the class that has some getters and setters. And by the way, those getters and setters they have sometimes other names. Getters are also called accessors. Accessors, what do you mean with ac accessors? Well, because we can access the variable, so that's why they call them accessors. And uh, let me just show you something somewhere. Yeah, the accessor is the get, and the set is some times refer to mutator which is kind of mutator because it's it mutates it changes so you can change the value it's kind of yeah I prefer get set and getter setters but just you have to know that access assessors accessors sorry accessors and mutators these are getters and setters Yes. Yes, exactly. Well, that's a good point. We always use void because we don't want to return anything. When we set, we're going to be changing a variable, so we don't need to return anything. And generally, we don't need to even display anything in the setter or the getter. You see this get volume? We might be tempted to say, OK, you know what? Just take this, just store it into a variable, and then display it and return it. So I can do something like this, result is equal to that, and then display this volume is equal to something. I can do that, that nobody can prevent me from doing it, but that's not the best practice. The best practice is that you don't display in a getter or a setter. You just, the setter just sets a variable, so that's it. Let, let it do its job, don't combine things together. If you want to display what well, is a getter that you can use so I can display something like that so I can display the way I want it to be displayed so just that's the general practice we don't put any kind of displaying inside those getters and setters 
you could if you want to but again we're talking about how to program efficiently not how to program because you know now how to program right